This is Dr. David Johnson at Quillen College of Medicine, East Tennessee State University, and this video is to explain how to use warfarindosing.org, which is a online algorithm that you can enter data into to calculate, you enter genetic data based on single nucleotide polymorphisms to calculate the initial dose of warfarin for your patient. And this was developed at Barnes Jewish Hospital at Washington University Medical Center in St. Louis, and it's supported by the NIH, and you can make donations to it. It's primarily based on the uh, SNPs, or the cytochrome P450s, as we call them, uh, CYP2C9, the vitamin K F oxide reductase and some other genes. It was uh, initially started with 1,000 patients and it really improves, it's, uh, improves the ability to do this. It was developed initially by Dr. Brian F. Gage at Washington University and supported by the NIH. So it's been used by almost a million people so far. And uh, you can, there's an ongoing clinical trial and you can, if you have patient data, you can aid in that ongoing clinical trial. You can also look at outcomes. Uh, you can look at hemorrhage risk. Interestingly, hemorrhage risk, you can see how uh, as you, the uh, INR goes up, hemorrhage risk goes up. Uh, so you, you, one of the things you do with warfarin dosing, warfarin's an anticoagulant. You want to, you give it to patients to slow their clotting, but you don't want to slow it too much or then they'll start bleeding. So hitting the right doses at, at the right places is very important. So here's a, 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 a glossary telling you about the various drugs that it considers, about the cytochrome uh, 2C9, about the cytochrome uh, 4F2 genotype, the uh, GGX, GGCX genotype, which is the gamma glutamyl carboxylase, which is the enzyme that actually puts the extra carboxyl group onto prothrombin and other clotting factors, talks about liver disease, uh, talks about warfarin and coumadin, is another term for that. Uh, other factors can be considered, uh, antibiotics, statins, etc. And also about the VKORC1 gene, which codes for the vitamin K epoxide reductase that takes oxidized vitamin K and converts it back to reduced vitamin K so it can be utilized again. And we will, uh, so SNPs are very important here, and here's, I'm going to explain what a SNP is, and a SNP is a single nucleotide polymorphism. And here's SNPedia, and here we, it tells you about uh, the SNPs, especially this uh, CP2C9, which is involved in metabolizing warfarin and lots of other compounds, including aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen. And we can see the SNPs down here, the normal one, or the wild type is star one, and it's, it's designation, and so it has normal enzyme activity. Star two has a mutation at, at base uh, number 430 from a C to a T, and this is the SNP number, RS1799853. That results in a single amino acid change from an arginine at 144 to a cysteine C at the same position, results in an inactive enzyme. Uh, we also consider the star three, which is an inactive enzyme. The star five is a decreased activity and the star six is an inactive enzyme. Now, the, the other, this data for these SNPs is generated by uh, companies such as 23andMe, Human Omni One Quad, Illumina Human One M, uh, Ancestry.com and Family Tree DNA and FTDNA uh, DNA two, I think that's Family Tree DNA. So the lot where a lot of people are getting their uh, this information, the, it's cheap to get SNPs analyzed because it's all done on a chip. So uh, th think about this when you're treating your patients if you have this information. So let's now go back to the uh, algorithm and we'll go to the warfarin dosing 
and we're going to go down here and select a patient that has currently no uh, dosing and we're going to go on to continue. We're going to give this guy an age of 60. Uh, we're going to give him a sex. We're going to call him a male. We're going to, uh, we don't know about his ethnicity. He says he's Caucasian. Uh, his weight we'll say is 190 and his height is 5 feet 10 for example and then we see if he's a smoker no he's a non-smoker well uh, no known liver disease indication reason he's do we're going to say we're doing this for knee replacement we're going to have a starting dose we'll estimate at 1.0 we might have a data if we did that we could add that we're going to hit try to hit a three uh, for anticoagulant uh, other drugs, zero, so he's not taking any other drugs that may be metabolized by these same SNPs or the same cytochromes, so they don't interfere. And then we can go down to our various uh, other. So this is the vitamin K reductase, and we'll say he's a GG, warfarin insensitive. And, um, and then we have a, uh, for this other SNP, we pick the wild type. For this one, we'll take the wild type. For this one, we'll take a heterozygous. We'll do wild type for the others. Uh, and now we can, once we get all this selected, we can then go and accept, you have to accept the terms or it won't, it'll give you a little error box. And now you can calculate it. So now we have a starting dose of uh, 7.3 suggested uh, that will end up with a therapeutic dose of 5.9. It was giving a little higher dose, probably starting out around 10 if you want to, and you can adjust this up or down, and it gives you a number in here. And uh, so then you can give your patient a number. We'll call this patient number three. And I've got my email address in there, and I've got my name and email down here. And it will send me this information, or send the doctor, your, uh, it, this information and give you uh, what you need to know about how you're going to uh, treat this individual. So here's all the information about him, his height and everything, and you could have put his name in here and you can actually export this to Word if you'd like and it gives you actual dose, etc. information. So there you are, uh, warfarindosing.org. Hopefully this helps you understand warfarin dosing and how to treat patients.